Today we're going to take a look at Nordic American tankers. They just reported earnings this morning, so let's get started. The first thing we're going to take a look at today is this company's stock price performance. And unfortunately, after reporting earnings, this company is down about 3%. After, before the market opens, the, the company was up, I think, about 3%, but unfortunately, it ended the day with the sell-off. And today, what we're going to take a look at is first, we're going to take a look at the stock price performance. Then we're going to take a look at results on their earnings. And finally, the, the information they provided to us. Many of you guys have been following Nat, and Nat has actually been a very volatile stock. I know in just the past few months, this company peaked at about a, so almost 200% from its lows in the past six months. And then from its highs, it's already dropped about 34%. So this company is very volatile, and I know a lot of people have made a lot of money, and a lot of people have actually got burned with this stock. So good luck to anybody that's in this company right now. So just a quick overview of what happened, what's happening with the oil tankers and why the oil tankers like Nat doing ha, ha, being such a volatile market so in just a quick 30 second explanation there is a huge increased supply of oil and there is a decreased demand in in oil as well just because everything shut down so the demand of oil is down but the increased supply of oil is up and what that ends up creating is a huge surplus of oil with that huge surplus of oil there's really no place to store that oil so Companies like Nat, which are usually meant to just transport the oils, have also become as a bank where you store your oil and they started increasing the amount of daily charges. And that's those numbers are something we're going to see later on through this episode. But they're charging more money. So obviously they're making more money. And even it's still the same, the same ships or the same vessels that they that they own. So the cost remains the same, but just how much they charge has increased dramatically. And before we go any further, guys, don't forget to hit that subscribe button, the thumbs up and the bell. It helps the small channel out so much. And I truly appreciate it. One more thing, guys. Tomorrow we have some nice earnings. We have Walmart and Home Depot. Let me know in the comments which one you guys want me to do, if any. If not, there's plenty of other companies also reporting earnings. So feel free to post in the comments which one you guys want me to take a look at. All right, so next let's take a look at this company's earnings results. So this is for quarter one of of 2020 and quarter one gap earnings per share were 27 cents which beat by two cents and revenue was 86.2 million and that 86.2 million is up 60 percent compared to the same time last year um, and that actually ended up beating expectations by about 2.9 million and you might say why are these expectation beats only that small and this is just because most of these expectations values are a moving number so as we were getting closer to earnings and as we were getting more uh, as we were becoming to understand the market analysts also increased their earnings per share estimations and their revenue estimations so that's why you only see beats by very small percentage wise but i think that is the main reason why this company is down right now right so i do think it, this is just my personal opinion the stock market values a lot of future expectations so it was truly expected that this company was going to end up providing good price on good earnings and it was going to it was expected that this company is going to provide great revenue and that is what we saw but i wonder how much of that was already priced in and that's what helped off, made that sell off happen i mean we also got to understand right quarter two for the upcoming quarter is also going to be a very strong quarter for for these companies and they're going to talk about it in their press release where we're, we're going to take a look at they do mention that quarter two even quarter three is going to be pretty strong for them not only in revenue they're going to be providing great dividends but how much of that is already priced in and i think that's what the biggest risk of, of investing in a company like this is with such a known factor that they are going to do so good what what is already priced in and the other thing is the unknown of how long this great um this great market is gonna last for them is is eventually the production gonna drop down and demand gonna increase that they're no longer gonna need that and all the oil tankers to 
to actually become um, a form of a, of, a, of a transportation bank for them. So we might see prices go down. So we don't know how long this could, right? You don't know how long this can last. Could this last a year? Could this last two years? Could this last 10 years? And that unknown also adds risk and adds volatility to companies like this. Next, I wanted to take a look at just the annual values of how revenue growth has done for this company. We mentioned how revenue growth grew about 60% this quarter. And then just in the prior year, in 2019, this company's revenue grew about 10% compared to 2018. In 2018, revenue actually declined by 2%. By 2%. In 2017, it declined by 16%. In 2016, it declined about 20% compared to 15. So we can see on average, this company has more has been more likely to decrease revenue compared to its prior year. But right now, seeing that 60% year to um, year to year growth is a pretty good thing for if you're investing in this company, right? 60% year to year growth is no laughing matter, especially since last year, they, they saw a 10% overall annual growth. Right. When I say that 60% growth, that means 60% of quarter one of 2020 compared to quarter one of 2019. And I do believe 2020 um, quarter two will be a lot stronger in revenue growth. And quarter three might also uh, uh, quarter three right now is unknown. But I do think quarter two will be one of the biggest quarters revenue growth this company has probably seen. So just a quick thing back in the stocks, I did mention why the stock price is going up, right? Everybody was flooding into this market because, hey, Nordic American is going to be charging a lot more money. Um, but I haven't talked about why the prices have gone down. And one of the main pr um, reasons the prices have gone down is the daily charge that these that these oil tankers, especially Nat, were charging, did see a peak. And after that peak, they started decreasing a little bit by little bit by little bit. So even though they're still making a lot more money than they were, it did seem like they hit a peak of what they can charge. And that ended up causing stock prices in all these oil tankers to start to drop. All right, so next we're going to take a look at this company's press release. And all this information is actually found pretty easily. If you go to on Nat, on Nat's Investors Relationship website, you can find the whole article. But I pretty much just highlighted all the, inf inf the information that I found was pretty important or just pretty noteworthy. So the first thing is just this quarter alone, the first quarter of 2020 actually beat the whatever what this company made in the full year of 2019. They do say prospects for 2020 and 2021 are promising. So they do say for the next two years, at least, they do believe that things will look good for this company. So they do mention that net profit for this quarter was $40 million compared to just last quarter. So in quarter four of 2019, this company made 12.7 million. And in the first quarter of 2019, this company made 5.6. So like we mentioned already, right? Just in one quarter, this company did more than it did in the past four quarters. On March 24th, this company did announce their 91st, con their 91 consecutive quarterly dividends. So this company has been paying dividends nonstop for, for uh, to its investors. The dividend for the first quarter of 2020 is going to be 14 cents per share and it's going to be payable on June 15th for any shareholders that have the company on May 26. This is double the dividend paid in the previous quarter of, of in the previous quarter. So we can see they are using that extra money coming in to pay more dividends. So they increased their dividend size by two times. And here they start talking about the rates. So remember how I mentioned rates is one of the biggest reasons that drove the stock price up. So in the first quarter of 2020 the the average rate per ship was forty four thousand dollars forty four thousand one hundred per day and that's almost up 40 percent so compared to quarter four of just last year so just last quarter they were charging thirty one thousand seven hundred and that's actually i actually was expecting them to be charged the average rate to be a little bit higher but a 40 percent growth is pretty big so this quarter they charged an average of forty four thousand. last quarter they charged um an average of thirty two thousand. so an increase of about what is that twelve thousand dollars so again not bad but to be honest i was expecting a bigger so far for the second quarter of 2020 um, they have they have an average an average rate of fifty thousand dollars per day. So we can see it has increased. It's still increasing. So it has increased compared to quarter one. But has that peak happened? Are we going to see quarter three be lower than fifty thousand? 
Um, but they do say this is encouraging signal for dividend payments in the second quarter of 2020. So what they're saying here, what, what, what I'm reading from here is they're saying that the second quarter dividend is going to be a lot higher than that 14 cents. Um, and they do mention that their operating costs are about $8,000 per day per ship. Um, so remember those $44,000 I mentioned were per day per ship. Um, so it increases obviously with the amount of ships, but their flatline cost has been $8,000 per day and that doesn't increase. So that's good because they means that their margins increase. They're, they're making more revenue, a lot more revenue, but they're charging their, their cost is pretty much the same. All right. So next I actually want to take a look at this company's balance sheet. All right, right now, let's just take a look at cash and cash equivalents. And right now we're comparing March 31st of 2020, which is when quarter one ended, compared to December 31st of 2019, which was just three months ago. So cash and cash equivalents for this company right now is sitting at about $64 million. All right, this is in thousands. Yeah, $64 million compared to $48 million last quarter. So we did see a huge increase in cash. We also see a huge increase in accounts receivables. So if you guys wonder what's accounts receivables, first, let's take a look at numbers. So right now they're sitting at $32 million of accounts receivable. Last quarter, they were sitting at about $25 million of accounts receivable. So that's an increase of about $7 million there. And then an increase of about $16 million, $18 million, $16 million in cash and cash equivalents. And accounts receivable, that's money that customers owe to them. So obviously at this quarter they're charging more money to they're charging more money for the ships they obviously expect you you would obviously expect your accounts receivables to increase because this is the money they're expecting to get paid from their customers next let's take a look at this company's total current assets total current assets just last quarter were 120 almost 130 million dollars right now they're about 150 million dollars an increase of about 20 million and those big changes pretty much came from those two weeks saw cash and cash equivalents and accounts receivables so that's actually a pretty good thing to see all right so next let's just take a look at this company's total assets so total assets this quarter were one billion and 37 million dollars where last quarter it was one billion and 30 million dollars so total assets have only increased by about 7 million so you might be like hey jose how can their total current assets increase by about 20 million but their total assets only increase about 7 million where did that other 13 million dollars go and the answer is simple a huge portion of this company's total assets is their vessels so their vessels make up close to 900 million dollars of this company's total assets last quarter this company had about 900 million dollars of asset of vessels where now this company has 887 million dollars of total assets a decrease of about 13 million so you might be like jose what happened why does this company have 13 million dollars less of vessels did they end up selling any ships and no they did not sell any ships. vessels are just like cat cars or any other vehicles where as the time progresses their value actually depreciates so this is where you see that depreciation and you saw a decrease in their assets because of that depreciation but overall assets did grew about seven million so that's actually a pretty good thing next let's take a look at this company's liability and this company's total let's start off with total current liabilities total current liabilities last quarter were about 59 million dollars this quarter were 78 million dollars an increase of about 20 billion 20 million dollars and you might be like jose that's actually pretty scary why did their liabilities increase so much the main part the main, the main reason their liabilities increased so much is other current liabilities last quarter was 15 billion 15 million this quarter was about 30 million so an increase of 15 million there that 15 million increase there um is the extra dividend that this company is paying this quarter compared to what they paid last quarter so and that's usually and that's a big portion of that increase in total current liabilities the other big change was in current portion of long-term debt and this is just how much company this company needs to pay be paid off in the next 12 months and this just this one doesn't really freak me out to see an increase in any company because it's just pretty much when their payment date is due right if you don't have to pay this in the first quarter most companies don't end up paying it they probably end up waiting later on so it's i, I think it's okay to see that increase in long-term debt in the current portion of long-term debt but when we take a look at the overall long-term debt so long-term debt for this company 
last quarter was 375 million million right now it's 354 million that's a decrease of about 20 million dollars and that to me is actually pretty good it means this company is paying down its debt and that's a good thing to see finally the last thing i want to take a look at is this company's cash flow and this company was actually pretty intense when they did this they're comparing their cash flow of this quarter compared to the cash flow of the full year of 2019. so first i wanted to take a look at how this company was doing in payment wise of of debt and that's a very important thing to see how this company is paying down debt in the full year of 2019 this company paid about 14 million dollars of total debt just in the first quarter of 2020 they paid 7 million so they paid a little bit over 50 percent of what they paid in the full year of 2019 already so i'm gonna I'm, i expect by the end of second quarter that this company will do will probably have paid off more debt than they did in the full year of 2019. the next thing is just the amount of dividends this company distributed in the full year of 2019 this company paid off about 14 million dollars of dividend in just the first quarter this company paid off 10 million dollars of dividends so just in one quarter they're already paying off close to 75 percent of what they paid off in the full year so finally my thoughts on the company um for um the balance sheet of this company was actually not as bad but i did expect them to pay off a little bit more second quarter does seem to be a bit better for this company they do expect a lot more revenue com coming in from that company so for second quarter i am expecting their their balance sheet to continue to drop and i'm expecting them to increase their dividend as well unfortunately if i'm also seeing this it means a lot of the big investors have probably seen this so my question is always like how much of this has already been priced in for the overall of the stock for me this is definitely not a company i would personally invest in because i invest in a company that's expecting to grow overall and like we took a look at this company's revenue growth most of the past years this company has actually seen a decline in revenue yes this year we are going to see a revenue growth and most likely next year as well but after that i don't see much growth in the revenue and for those reasons and just the overall market i'm not big in oil tankers how I, i'm more into investing in companies that will continue to grow in the next five to six years and for that reasons i'm personally not going to invest in this company but i can understand why other investors are willing to to jump into this stock this does seem like a short-term play and this very volatile that i feel like both bulls and bears can make money in this company so I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Make sure to subscribe. Make sure to give the thumbs up. See you next time. And I'm actually trying to do another video by the end of tonight. So I hope you guys enjoy it. Take care.